Hey, Kim here from Craft Buggy. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this makeup brush holder. I love this because it's so good for travel and even for everyday use if you go to the gym and then go to work right after. You can just keep all your brushes here neat and organized. You don't have to, I used to put them in a plastic bag. So this made such a huge difference. And then you can decide with, with your custom brushes how big you want each slot. So you can really just make this completely custom to your stuff. So I really love this because then you can roll it up and then use the ribbons to just secure it and tie it. And then you can just put it in your bag and it's just so easy, it protects everything. And so we all know how expensive makeup brushes can be. So I just think this is such a great thing. And it's a really good project for a beginner sewer. So if you don't have a lot of sewing experience, this is such a good project for you. It's very simple. I will walk you through everything. Let's go ahead. I will show you what you need and we'll get started. For these makeup brush holders, you're gonna want four pieces of fabric total. So because I wanna show you how everything is laid out, I'm using two different, um, like two different patterns. So for the main like base structure, you're gonna want two of the 15 and a half by 10 and a half. And then for the front, you're gonna want two pieces of the 15 and a half by five inches. And so you'll see in a second how all of this goes together, but then between each of those, you're gonna want a piece of fusible interfacing. And so I'm using Pellin, I just got this at Joann's, and you can just see the little bumps in the top. Those are the pieces, that's, that's what's gonna melt it to the fabric. And so um, it's just gonna be sandwich, sandwiched in between here, and then this one, is gonna be sandwiched in between these two. I will show you exactly how to do everything. And then you're gonna want a coordinating thread of some kind. I love Guterman. And then you're gonna want ribbon. So with the ribbon, the important thing to know is that because makeup brushes are gonna be going on this, it's gonna have makeup spots over it. So you're gonna to wanna to wash this occasionally. And if you use a really glittery, super um, decorative ribbon, it's not gonna wash as well. So that's why I'm using this kind of more of a plain ribbon. It's still fun, I love the color, but of course, you know, glitter is always my first choice, but it just doesn't wash well. So with the ribbon, it's just important, something very durable. And so I'm gonna be cutting two pieces of, um, two 17 inch pieces of this ribbon. And then you're gonna need iron, ironing board, and then all the accessories like, um, pins, or if you want wonder clips, um, scissors, everything you need for sewing. But that's actually everything that I can think of that you're gonna need. Let's go ahead and I will show you how to assemble everything. So you first wanna kinda get everything laid out and organized. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna take one of each measurement of fabric and put it aside. And so I'm gonna just put this aside right here. And then you're gonna line up, I did that one right here and you can tell right here, I got a little ambitious with my rotary cutter. And so I'm just gonna, because the side is adhesive, I'm just gonna stick that on there and iron it on just like that. And then no one will know. So I'm gonna put that one aside. And then with this guy here, you can see you wanna make sure that it's the bumpy rough side because if you use the soft side, then nothing's gonna stick. So I'm gonna go ahead, line this up. And then I should have ironed this. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It'll stick to the pellen. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get my ironing board and I'm gonna iron this on so that it sticks to the back. I have my fabric laying on my interfacing. So my fabric is right side up. The wrong side is to this edge, that this side that's going to be fused. And so I'm gonna go ahead, sorry if the camera's shaky, I'm gonna go ahead and just start to iron this down. And I tend to just kind of do shorter strokes, that way it doesn't burn. If you're nervous about it, you can always use a Teflon sheet. Now that I have all of my interfacing fused to my fabric, you can see right here and then on the bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to assemble everything. So once everything is said and done, you're gonna have this piece right on top. You're gonna sew little pieces here so that the brushes can go into each individual compartment. So separate the two at first, and then you wanna take this, um, this other piece of fabric right side together, and then you just wanna sew around it, but you wanna leave 
and opening that way you can reverse this right side out. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just place two pins so that I don't forget. And then this will be my opening and then I'm going to go ahead and pin all the way around the rest of it. And then I'm going to put that aside. I just wanted to show you real quick. Um, for this guy right here, you're going to get the ribbons involved because you don't want to wait until the very last minute to do this step. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of wonky. So what I like to do is try to figure out where you want your ribbons to sit. So I want mine about right here. I'm going to leave a little bit hanging out here. And then I'm just going to kind of put that. I don't want it to be like completely wadded up, but I want it to... You know what? I'm going to pin it. I'm going to pin it into place about right here so it sits a little bit flatter. That way it's not adding so much bulk to my project. And you'll see why, because we're going to place another piece of fabric right on top. So flatten that out. And then I'm just going to pin these guys just like that. And then I'm going to place my piece of fabric right side down. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is same thing as my other piece. I'm going to add, I'm going to line this up actually. And then I'm going to take two pieces or two pins vertically. So it indicates where my opening is going to be because you also want to revert this right side out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin all the way around. Now you can see I have everything pinned into place and you can see I have my opening set aside for right here on this piece. And then you can see that I have my opening set aside right here on this piece. You can also see my ribbons sticking out here. So when I bring everything right side out, you'll be able to see the ribbons coming out the other end and it'll all tie together. So I'm gonna go ahead, bring this to my sewing machine. I'm gonna do a fourth inch seam allowance and just a basic straight stitch. As you can see, I have my edges sewn. You can see the opening here and the opening here. I went ahead and I took the pins out that are supporting the ribbon, just because I didn't wanna poke myself. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is cut the corners off of these pieces just so that we can get some pointier edges. And then I'm going to revert all of the fabric right side out. I have everything turned right side out. So you can see the opening here and you can see the opening here. So what I like to do at this point is to close this up and let me get a pen. And then I just like to pin this shut. That way I can create a seam. I do things in kind of an odd order here, but I think it makes the most sense to me. So just close that seam or close that opening. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and just do one stitch right across here. Don't do any more than that, just the one stitch. Now that I have this seam completely done, you could see nothing is moving there. I'm going to go ahead and just place this where I want it. So um, I want this at the bottom here and then make sure you take care of this part up here. You want to make sure, I'm going to move this here a second. You want to make sure that this opening is shut. You don't want any loose ends hanging out because then you're going to have to redo the whole thing and that's frustrating. So go ahead and pin that into place. And then what you're gonna do at that point is set everything up. So it looks kind of like puffy and weird right now. I'm gonna put this over the top and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin that into place. And so once this is pinned into place, you're just gonna create a seam. And I will walk you through all of that right before I take it to the sewing machine. I have everything pinned in place. So the only things that I'm really worried about are the opening here, and then making sure that this section of fabric is secured to the back section of fabric. 
don't touch this area up here yet. I'll show you what to do with that at the end. Um, so you're just gonna create a seam right along the edges here. So just one big box. You can see that I have everything sewn and we just have a bigger gap right in here. So we're gonna fix that now. Um, and then I did wanna show you up here, you can see the edges are completely sealed. And then I found, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but one thing that you might need that helps me a lot is a heat, it's, it's a pen and whenever you, I'll show you, you can draw on something and then when you apply heat to it, it erases. And so that helps with this step right here. And so what I like to do is decide where I want my lines. And so say I wanna draw a line about right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my ruler, line it up, make sure you're, first of all, make sure this is lined up approximately with the grid. And then I'm going to line everything up here. And then I'm going to draw my line. And then I'm going to keep doing that all the way across until I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and just create one seam where all the lines are. I just wanted to show you what my lines look like when they're completely drawn. So it doesn't look pretty right now, but I'm just going to sew a line right along. Don't go up here, just down here and then just sew along these lines. You can see that I have all my little individual slots sewn in there. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is run my iron over this. That'll get rid of all these pen marks. And then I'll show you what the final product looks like. I'm loving this so much. So I just put a couple brushes in here just to show you. And then here's what the back looks like. And then the way this works is I just roll it up and then I use my ribbon. If I can get it apart here. And then I just use my ribbon to secure it. So then I tie a cute little bow. And then as you can see, this is so perfect for travel. I just love it. It's so handy. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below. I will get back to you and I will answer your questions the best that I possibly can. I hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful because I love mine and I use it all the time and it's just, it's helped me so much. Plus I've made some for friends. It's such a fun gift. And then if you want to personalize it, you can always on the back of it, you can put a decal, like an iron on decal with their name, or you can embroider the back, um, whatever you prefer. But I just kind of kept mine plain today, but I do love it. I think no matter what you do, it's going to be cute and people are going to love it. So I would love for you to visit me at craftbuggy.com. I'll have every thing, written detailed instructions on how to complete this craft. Also, I have a bunch of other crafts I'd love to share with you. And if you like this video, you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button and I will see you for the next craft.